Hi there. I'm sure you've heard a lot about the situation in Mexico with all the violence that's been occurring because of the narco trafficking wars. I'd like to shed a little bit of light on how this is affecting not only the politics but also the economy in Mexico, which of course filters into all of Latin America and the US. So just a little bit of background. Now it's kind of hard to pinpoint exactly what the problem is. But if we look back to the history of Mexico, it's only been about the last 10 years or so that this violence has been a real issue. The change that um, brought this all into being was that the president, who was Vincente Fox six years ago, when he was elected into office, he is part of a political party that is committed to cleansing the system, which is basically getting rid of the corruption in Mexico. The previous political party, which had been in power for 70 years, uh, is known for being very friendly with the drug cartels and for even making deals with them or taking cuts of the money to not cause any problems. Now, Vincente Fox, he took out many of the top leaders of these drug cartels, which many can point back to and say that this created a power vacuum or that the sub-leaders of these cartels competed with each other in terms of violence and um, deaths that we see in the news to fill these top spots in these, in these cartels. Now the new president, well new meaning he's been in power for five years, is Felipe Calderon. He, his term will end at the end of um, June of 2012, but his approach has been much more drastic and he has tried to um, take out corruption not only in the drug wars but also in other areas where corruption is very present in Mexico. This being casinos which you may have seen about the mass um, killing of 52 people in a casino in Monterrey, Mexico in August from a fire that occurred with uh, two cartels fighting with each other. And also the um, the police system is very corrupt as well. It's estimated that about 165,000 police receive benefits from the narco traffickers. This, these payouts result in over 1.2 billion dollars annually. Now these policemen take cuts of the narco trafficking money to not only protect the traffickers but also to not cause any problems and to not pass on their illegal actions. So in Mexico there's about six main cartels that we hear about. If you look at this map right here you can see that the different colors are talking about the different areas where each cartel has power. So the most violent areas are up in Tijuana by San Diego Ciudad Juarez, which is by El Paso, Texas, and then this orange portion over here has been receiving much attention lately because the Gulf Cartel is fighting with a splinter group that has been trying to take over. These are called the Setas, and like I said, they've probably been the most portrayed in the news lately. So, a lot of the violence occurs not only from cartels fighting against the government, but from cartels fighting over territory, one against another, trying to take bigger cuts of trafficking. So with the President Felipe Calderon taking a stronger action to cut down on the corruption in his country, in his five years there's been over 44,000 citizen deaths. This is a staggering statistic. And in cities such as Juarez, that's by El Paso, the rate in some of these more dangerous times of death has been up, upwards of 40 people dying a day. Um, it's incredibly sad, however, my opinion is that this needs to continue. The government needs to have their strong stance to rid the system of corruption. I know that I'm saying this from the safety of a different country where I don't have to deal with any of this, but there is a threat looming in the near horizon when President Calderon, when he leaves office, 
the candidate that is winning the election and that will likely take over in uh, July of 2012 is from the party that has been historically friendly with these cartels. It's estimated that he will revert to the old ways of making deals with the cartels which some citizens are happy about, meaning that they will not have as much terror and as much violence in their cities. However, there's a growing group of citizens that are using social media, such as Twitter and Facebook, to actively call out for the continuation of these drastic actions by the government. And having lived in Mexico and seeing a portion of this violence, I feel that it would be an extreme injustice if this new presidential candidate takes office and is friendly once again with the cartels. To me this would be the equivalent of having these 44,000 people die in vain because nothing will have been accomplished. These cartels will have power once again and Mexico's economy will continue to suffer. It's estimated that um, GDP growth is stagnant or is withheld by at least 1% a year because of the violence that's occurring in Mexico, which filters down, especially into the tourism industry. So I'd like to hear your opinions, especially if you have had experiences in Mexico. Have you felt safe there? Are you willing to go there right now? And what do you think should happen when whoever this new presidential candidate takes office?